Okay, sets. What is a set? Okay, so a set is a well-defined collection of objects with distinct elements. Okay? So you could say, what is the set of all students in this room? And that'd be like a list of names. Uh, or I could say, what is the set of odd integers? That's actually an infinitely long set. So some sets are infinitely long, others are not. Let's start with a nice finite set called A. I could teach you like five different things just using this little guy. Okay? So first thing I'm going to do is start with this. This would be pronounced, the set A consists of elements 0, 1, 2, 3. Set A consists of four elements, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And by the way, for the purposes of this class, 0 does count as an object. 0 counts as an object. If you disagree with me, maybe you've heard the old, uh, the, the old riddle, a barber in a town shaves everybody who cannot, or excuse me, a barber in a town shaves everybody who doesn't shave themselves. Have you ever heard this riddle? Okay, so there's a barber in a town. His job is to shave everybody who doesn't shave. Right? So there's all these men. They don't have razors. So that's his job. He shaves everybody. Does he shave himself? Yeah. He shaves everybody who doesn't shave themselves. Oh, no. If he grabs his razor, so he can't shave himself. So he's a super fat beard. Well, but he shaves all the men in the town who don't shave themselves. The question is just this. Does he shave himself? Because if he shaves himself, then he's technically breaking his rule that he shaves those who don't shave themselves. So he doesn't shave himself? He just doesn't shave. Okay. And then he has a super fat beard. So looking at this here, do we count zero as an object or not? It doesn't contribute anything to a sum. Right? But yet, in this class, we'll still treat it as an object. It is one of the numbers on the number line. It's a meaningful number. But in a, in a real sense, it is quite different from other numbers. There's lots that we can talk about here. By the way, if you, if you think... If one person thinks that zero is supposed to count here as a number, and someone else thinks that zero shouldn't count as a number, we have a very, very important argument going on. And one of those people will not believe that one plus one is two. Okay? One plus one equals two has been proven by a guy named Bertrand Russell and many others, but he has a 360-page book as to why one plus one is two. Okay? And it all hinges on this question, does zero count? Okay? So if you ever want to read his work, you'll probably be the first in many years to read it. But uh, the name of the book is Principia Mathematics, Mathematica. And it's basically what Newton did with physics and that sort of thing, he did with math. He, he just wanted to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that one plus one was two. And he defined what equals means, he defined what zero means, and what one is and, and what plus means, and he basically nailed it all down. And if his work is credible, then you can believe one plus one is two. Some people say there's still some missing ingredients in that book, but I haven't read it, so I don't know. I probably wouldn't understand it if I did read it. Would you like to see a page from the book? Yes. Back to the drawing board here. Okay, so mathematically we can write, that was a slight detour, sorry. We can write that the number of elements in set A is 4. So this is a new symbol, I think, for everybody. But it just means that A has four members. And this is how we write that. A has four members. There we got that new notation. Set A consists of four elements. All right. Let's say that set B 
looks like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Fill in the blank. <coughs> what would you put in the blank here? Don't shout it out. Just fill it in. N of B equals. So, Carly, what would go in the blank here? Five. five. Why? What does it mean? Yeah, set B has five elements. Good. Okay. Notice that set B and set A are not totally different sets. I mean, they're different, but think of set B as like a store, and, and A is... A is a, 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 hold on, set B is a store, okay, and this robber goes into the store, and he steals some things, and he takes them home, okay? So A would represent the objects that were stolen from the store, okay? Now the thief, you can see, only got away with the zero, the one, the two, and the three. He left the four in the store. I don't know, maybe the four was too big or something. And if you could carry it. He's like, I can only grab four objects. I'm going to grab the zero, the one, the two, and the three. So I'm out of here. Okay? So the thief forms set A in his bedroom. And it consists of only elements stolen from B, right? All of the elements in A were stolen from B. And we have this little symbol here. What do you think it means? A is less than B. What do you think that means? By the way, this is a um, curved inequality, brand new symbol there. It was also in Bertrand's work. If, if you look back at the web page, it's right, um, well, he has a greater than version of it right here. Okay, but what do you suppose that symbol means? Yeah, may I? There's more elements in B. There's more elements in B? Good. That's not all it means, but that's part of it. Yeah. Okay. What were you going to say? Okay. Yeah, everything you guys are saying is true. When you write this, it's pronounced, it's pronounced like this. A is a proper subset of B. And what it means is A contains only elements from B. A contains only elements from B. It's like if there was this thief, right, and all he ever does is rob Walmarts. Walmart would be the superset, okay, and the thief's house would just be a subset of Walmart, okay? So everything he owns is a Walmart product. It's just all stolen from Walmart. That's not to say he's stolen everything from Walmart. So, because his is truly less, he's got his own little Walmart going. Because it's truly less in size, it's a proper subset. That just means truly less than. Now, if he, listen, if the thief goes down to Circle K and steals a Slurpee, then his house is no longer a subset of Walmart. He's ruined that now. He's no longer able to say, my house is a proper subset. It's not proper because it contains elements borrowed from elsewhere, and Walmart doesn't sell slurpees. Can you be a proper subset of like D plus C? Yeah, we can, we can do that kind of thing, okay? I'm not getting quite into that today. I'm just trying to help you understand that when you see A is less than B, that does not necessarily mean I'm talking about one set smaller than another set. I'm talking specifically about one set smaller than another set whose elements are all borrowed from the bigger set. So, right now I'm thinking of two sets in my mind. Uh, okay, got it. One set has five members. One set has six members. Is the set with uh, five members a proper subset of the set with six members? It depends. It depends, that's right. The numbers I was actually thinking of were the set with five was one, three, five, seven, nine. Okay? The first five odds. The, the other set was 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. The first
first six evens. So technically, those weren't subsets situation because they're not the same members. So just because one set's smaller than another doesn't make it a subset of another set. It has to be made up entirely of things stolen from the bigger set. Does that make sense? Okay. Now this would be pronounced A as a proper subset of B. How do you suppose you'd pronounce it if it was written in reverse? B is a superset of A. B is a proper superset of A. Yes. Good. I don't think you need to write the word superset, okay? But you know there's subscript and superscript. Here we have uh, subset, superset. These are the same statement, aren't they? Okay, let's say that we have a set C now, and that set is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You might say, well, Mr. Shore, that's exactly the same set as set C. You're right. Set C and set B are equivalent. So what are equivalent sets? What makes two sets the same? Set. What makes them equivalent sets? They have all the exact same numbers. No more, no less. You could say this, that B is a subset of uh, C, and C is a subset of B, both at the same time. C is made up entirely of B's elements, and B is made up entirely of C's elements. That would imply that they're the same set. If I told you that the thief's house is a full-on Walmart, <laughs> what does that mean? He's living in Walmart. <laughs> oh, he might be living in Walmart, but no, he lives at home, but his, his bedroom is a full-on Walmart. What does that mean? He has everything in Walmart. He has everything Walmart has. Yeah, it's like black market Walmart. Okay. So, in other words, his set of objects is equal to Walmart's set of objects. Well, I guess then he'd be done stealing, yeah. Okay. This brings up another, another thing. Uh, if a set has one object that's duplicated, for example, if I wrote the set, you know, D equals 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, if you ever see this kind of thing, something's wrong. Because look back at the definition of set. What does it say? It says that in, the elements are distinct elements. Okay, That means that this is either a typo, or whoever wrote this problem doesn't understand set. You're not supposed to have any duplicates ever. Okay, So there's no such set as 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's just the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So don't ever write a repeat. And notice order doesn't really matter here. I've put them in numerical order, but that doesn't have to be. The set 21034 is the same set as 01234. Okay, any questions on that? All right. Now, there are two other statements that we could write about sets B and C that you might not have thought of. One of them is that B is a subset of C, and the other is C is a subset of B. Now notice these have the little equals on them. This is very important. I know it seems trivial, but this is very important. What this red statement is saying is B is either set C or it contains elements stolen from C. That is a true statement. I'll say it again. B is either the same as set C or it contains elements stolen from C. That's true. That's perfectly true. It is true that B is either the same or it is made up of elements stolen from C. In fact, they're both true. Now here, the blue statement is saying that C is made up entirely of elements stolen from B, either that or the exact same set. Because both of these are true at the same time, the both the red and the blue are true, these are the reason why the black statement is true. So whenever one set is a set, a subset of the other, and the other is a subset of the first, that implies they're the equal sets. And this works both ways. If two sets are the same set, you can make the blue and red statements. If the blue and the red statements are given, then you can write the black one. So this is a two-way street, a two-way conditional. Okay. 
question or comment on that? Yeah. If, if it means that it contains all of them or they're, they're exactly the same, could you use that symbol always if the statement is true? Yeah, in this classroom, or, the word or means that one of the, tr one of the statements is true or both. Okay? So, uh, for example, if I said, my name is Mr. Shore, or I'm a history teacher. That sentence is actually perfectly true. I said, I am Mr. Shore, or I'm a history teacher. Well, the second half of the statement is false, but I said or. So we can lean back on the first part, which is true. Okay? If I said, I am a... I am Mr. Shore, and, uh, or I am a... So today I just want to answer one other simple question, okay? Let's say that you have this set A. 0, 1, 2, 3. That's a 3, then my brace. Okay, I want to know what kind of subsets we can create. Let's look at subsets of A. Oh, I realized that 12.14 is when class used to end. 12.12 is when class actually ends. So let me just kind of run through this. Let's say that A is a store, and the thief goes to the store, and he wants to steal. But the alarm goes off, and he never gets away with anything. This is one possible news story in the morning. Okay? Or he makes it in to the store, and he's able to steal one of the four objects. What I've drawn here is basically the possibilities. He either stole item one, zero, one, two, or three. Or it's possible that he got away with two objects. There's no four. So he either got the, let me rewrite that list. He either got the zero and the one, or he got the zero and the two, or he got away with the zero and the three, or he got away with the zero and the the one the one and the two. Sorry. Race is not working. Or maybe he got away with the one and the three. Or maybe he got away with the two and the three. Or it's possible he had time to grab three objects off the shelf. Zero, one, and two. Zero, one, and three. One, two, and three. Or 0, 2, and 3. Or there's a possibility he got away with everything. These are all the different subsets I could think of for set A. They are all the different theft scenarios. Okay? Notice that we have 1 here, 4 here, 6 here, 4 here, and 1 here. Do these numbers look familiar? One, four, six, four, one. They should look familiar to you. They are 4C0, 4C1, 4C2, 4C3, 4C4, and there are a total of 16 possible thefts, including the case where he stole nothing or everything. And notice that that is 2 to the 4th. Interesting. There were four objects in the store, and there were two to the fourth possible theft scenarios. So we're building some theorems, aren't we, there? Okay, that's all I'm doing today, and then Monday we'll pick up with that idea, with Venn diagrams and universal sets and all that good stuff.